Welcome everyone to another episode of Let's Have a Conversation. Our podcast aims to raise awareness and promote education on various topics related to the McKinney-Vento Homeless Assistance Act and educational stability for youth in foster care. My name is Elizabeth Fortner, and I am the Outreach and Marketing Specialist for the Education for Children and Youth Experiencing Homelessness Program here in Region 3. Today, I'd like to welcome our guest speaker for today's episode, Shelly Candy. She is with the Early Learning Resource Center. So Shelly, I I sincerely appreciate your willingness to participate in our podcast, and we are very thrilled to have someone of your expertise to join us and share insights about your work. So let's get the conversation going. Can you just share a little bit about yourself and how you came to be with the ELRC? Well, Liz, great to be here. Thanks so much for having me. As you said, I am Shelly Candy, and I'm the Community Engagement Manager for Community Connections for Children. And we are the Early Learning Resource Center. We serve Regions 9, which is Cumberland, Dolphin, Perry, um, and Lebanon County. And then we serve Region 10, which is York, Adams, and Lancaster County. I have been in the field for well over 30 years and have been an early learning director previously, my bachelor's in early elementary education and in Bible from Lancaster Bible College. So I have been directing child cares and then I came to our organization and worked in the Keystone Star system, which is a rating system for child cares and worked with child care providers to ensure that we're having the highest levels of quality. A few years ago, I had the wonderful opportunity to expand and grow and always looking for those opportunities and became the community engagement manager. So my role with the ELRC is about building relationships. So I work with school districts, I work with United Way partners, I work with community partners. Any agency that might be working with a homeless population, we love to work with and build relationships with, and we are always looking for new connections. So that's part of who I am and where I come from, but working as part of the ELRC um, has been amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. So Shelly, to begin, can you share with us what the ELRC is? ELRC stands for Early Learning Resource Center. And a few years ago, the state decided to develop a system to provide a single point of contact for families, early learning service providers, and communities to gain information and access services that support high quality child care and early learning programs. Through the administration of both the Child Care Works Program, which is the subsidy child care program, and the Keystone Stars Program, the ELRC's create an enhanced resource and referral system for communities seeking early learning support and services. So that's a little bit about the ELRC. So you did mention, Shelly, that you do outreach with high schools and other community organizations and building your network and relationships is very important to your work. So how does building those connections and fostering those relationships with others play a critical role in achieving your objectives? And can you just elaborate on the importance of networking and collaboration and how it can lead to greater success? We really feel that it is those connections that best help families. So if we have the connections to be able to direct them to other resources, it is vital to them. And so that is why we work as Community Connections for Children to build those relationships, to establish partnerships. And our mission is to basically ensure that all families have access to affordable, high quality childcare choices that lead to success in school and life. And so we are building a thriving, growing community where all families are able to access high quality, affordable early childhood education, where children embrace a culture of learning, stay in school, and excel, and where businesses can recruit and retain educated employees. So that is a little bit of the background for our ELRC and what we do about with that. Um, So we are always looking for ways to help connect families. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I was going to ask why it's so important, but I feel like you hit why families should connect with the ELRC. Which, like you said, building those connections are very important. And that collaboration piece, what we do with the EKIA program as well is we build those relationships with our school districts, our local shelters, our children and youth agencies. 
our goal is to ensure that educational stability. And so what is it exactly that you do with these school districts? Well, um, we really know that early childhood is the foundation for children's success. And so as we work with child care providers, first and foremost, to help them, they are using the Pennsylvania Early Learning Standards. So they're setting the standard at the bottom so that education can be built on top of that. And those early learning years are so important in a child's development. And then our work with the school districts would be in partnering to help them get services that they may need for older children who might be attending school. We like to build those relationships so that they can then grow and have the support Support they need, whether it's in before school, after school care, or helping families with their older siblings to provide care and additional services that they may need that they're not getting at the school district level. So we're always looking to partner and collaborate with that. And that's great that you say that because chances are that young child may have a sibling in Correct. that school district, mm -hmm. and that school district just may not know that this family is experiencing barriers such as mm -hmm. homelessness, you know? So I think that collaboration piece is very important because it overlaps one another. Right. It's, right. Yeah. So when you work with the school districts, do you do anything as far as, you know, having meetings with them so they know that you're there and that these are the services that you provide? Yeah, we've done all kinds of things with our school district partners. We've done um, some of the back to school nights where we provided information about early learning and we've also provided support in finding before school, after school care, that wraparound care mm -hmm. that is so vital. So we are continually looking for those partnerships, building those partnerships. It may be just setting a meeting with the educational liaisons um, to be able to support early learning, to tell them about what the Early Learning Resource Center is. Many people don't know, and that is our vital component of getting out there is what we do, what we work with, who we work with, how we partner, those kinds of things. So I'm just thrilled to have this opportunity today to be able to share some of that with all of you. As far as increasing the awareness that the ELRC is available, and I know that you're, the counties that you serve are also a few of the counties that we serve here in Region mm -hmm. 3. I think maybe having that, we can have our liaisons join this meeting because I know you mentioned that you would do some quarterly meetings with the liaisons in the school districts. I have, yes. Yeah. So I think that's actually extremely important that if, you know, if they have the time, because we know that everyone's very busy with the school yeah. year, but to just sit in and listen to what you have to say and offer, because again, they may be working with a student who has a younger sibling mm -hmm. that could benefit going to, you know, one of the ELRC centers. So I think that piece is very important and increasing that awareness. Right. So I'm curious about the funding. Now, obviously, not every childcare or preschool is under the McKinney-Vento Homeless Assistance Act. So what are the options if they do not qualify under McKinney-Vento um, for funding, we definitely could look at having them in through our Child Care Works program to be able to help them with funding to pay for their child care for younger siblings. And so, how does the Child Care work? How does that, how does Child Care Works work? <laughs> child Care Works is a program that families need to apply for. Some families come to us through the county assistance office and other families apply. We have applications at our various offices, like our Lemoyne office, that's our main office for Region 9, which is Cumberland, Perry, Dolphin, Lancaster, or Lebanon County. And we have online applications as well through the Compass website. So families would just apply and provide the information. Parents do need to be working a minimum of 20 hours a week, but they could also be attending a school educational program that they could qualify as well. Or if they're homeless, they can self-certify that they are homeless and that would give them the opportunity by filling out a homelessness waiver to be able to provide funding for the child to be able to attend a child care 
So there's a whole lot that goes into it, but we have wonderful staff who are always able to walk the families through that process, whether they receive assistance through the county or things like that, or through the homelessness waiver. We're always looking for ways to partner. We do allow community organizations to help the client fill out the applications, whether it's the Compass website or whether it's actually filling out a hard paper application, but then the parent self-certify or the community organization can write a letter to certify that the family is homeless. So we would give them presumptive eligibility and they would have up to 92 days for that parent to be able to find employment to qualify. So we would definitely, you know, look at all the ways that we can help the family as a whole to get the help that they need, not just the elementary or early childhood students. And I was going to ask you, because I know you said they have to be working 20 hours a week, or at least in school, they have up to 92 days to Mm -hmm. look for a job. They can self-certify and then that would give them up to 92 days. Now, when you say self-certify, do families typically identify themselves through a self-certification or Are they more disclosing their information in an application or during the interview? They, when they are meeting, when they um, apply online or through an application, those applications are processed in a 10 day period. And then they get, would get sent missing information letters. So they'd have a certain amount of time to be able to get that back. And if they reach out to us and say, I can't provide pay stubs or I can't provide proof of residence. That is where we would then pull out that homelessness waiver and have them sign off that, yes, I am in this state and I need the extra time to be able to qualify. So our staff are really good about talking with them. We do have intake meetings with them. So we would be getting all of that information as they're involved in the program. Oh, well, that's great that they're not you know, afraid of self-disclosing that. I think that's really an important piece because a lot of the times we see that families may hold back sharing that sensitive information because of the the stigma of being homeless. Mm -hmm. And they fear that children and youth are going to get called. If you have a family that feels that way, that are unable to share that information with you or have that concern, you know, is there, how do you make them feel more comfortable about sharing that information? Well, all the work that we do is about building relationships. So getting to know that family in their intake meetings is really important to us. And just seeing and asking the questions allows them the opportunity to share. Because in order to qualify, they're going to have to prove that they're working. And if they can't prove that they're working, then, you know, why aren't you working? What's your situation? That kind of thing. So we do do a lot of talking with them to get that information. But because families are trying to get child care benefits or things like that, they tend to be more open to be able to get the support for their children. It shows their involvement in that. Glad that you at least can build that report with the families to make them mm-hmm. feel that what they're going through, obviously it's not okay, but it's okay to share it and that right. you're not there to be against them. You're there for them. You want right. to help. We're there them. to help. <laughs> exactly. So that's exactly. And I know you said you worked with other community agencies. So when you have a family that discloses a lot of other barriers, you know, because obviously I know you don't work with the housing or food Mm -hmm. pantries and things like that. Do you refer them? Do you have case managers that work with them or how does that work? When they fill out their application with us, they can indicate if they need any other resources. And so we do work with our United Way partners. We work with the various community agencies. Actually at our Lemoyne office, half or a third of our building is our offices, but then we also are connected to New Hope Food Pantry. And so families from there come over to us or we go over to them, you know, back and forth kind of connections. We have one of our staff, B. Prezetto, is a community outreach specialist, and she does lots of work in reaching out to the homeless shelters and providing them with the applications so that they can then walk their, their clients through that should the need arise. 
so yeah, we're just always about making the connections and pointing people. Um, we have resource and referral staff when they fill out their application, if they check anything like heating assistance or housing assistance or those kinds of things, our resource and referral staff then use those applications to get them the resources that they need. If they need child resources, we have those here at the office as well. So there's all kinds of resources that we have access to that we can connect them with. So I just kind of want to bring it back a bit to mm-hmm. the importance of identifying them why it's important as far as identifying these students early on and why it's a critical component to ensuring the success of our students. Well, I think, as we said, like the early years are so foundational in setting the stage for all of the rest of their educational experience. And so it's really important, even if we're removing that stigma at those early years so that they know that they have the opportunities just as much as other children have opportunities. So getting them involved in programs that will support and build on their early learning, getting them connected to community resources so that they know that they have a value too is really important in developing the child and their self-worth and their value. And so I think that is really, really important. And so Whatever can be done to build that early foundation is vital, not just for the parents and the family, but for the child themselves. And um, I think what we really strive to do is make each family feel valued. And, you know, they're not less because they're coming to us for services or no matter what their circumstances are, they have the opportunity to grow and learn and be valued. And having additional people in their lives at the early ages is really vital. And so what we do is build those connections and any way we can do that, it's, you know, really important to us. And that's why it's important that our program and working with the early childhood gets stronger because I feel like those connections are important from early on. And like you said, those first five years right. are extremely vital. And yep. that's when a majority of the brain development happens. Right, right. So I think that is extremely important. And like you keep saying that making connections and building relationships with your local community or your school districts Mm -hmm. or increase that awareness that the ELRC is there. So you did say that you go to back to school nights. Is that what you you said? We have, we do, um, we do a lot of community events. So yeah, what, um, what does that look like? I want to hear yeah. more about those events. Yeah, we do a lot of community events. Some of them are hosted by partner agencies in the community. We've done events here in the Harrisburg area on City Island where we go and we have a table at the neighboring events that they offer. And so we have resources available. We have applications, all kinds of fun giveaway things that we have, backpacks and fun things for the families. But we do the same thing any school district that wants us to. So if you're having a back to school night, we are happy to come and have staff at the table who would be able to provide the resources that we offer. Maybe it's, you know, transitioning your child from early care to a school district, how to help them with that. We work with the Foundation for Enhancing Communities, and they have a kindergarten readiness calendar that we can provide. So there's all kinds of opportunities and materials that we are always willing to bring to share with families to give them some of the basics to get you know, their child ready for going to kindergarten or transitioning to the next grade, those kinds of things. So we're always happy to do those things. And Shelly, who who should they connect with if they want to collaborate and have you guys come to one of their events? They can connect with me. I am working out of our Lemoyne office, so I can give you my cell phone number. That is 717 717- Eight five eight five six six three. That's the best way to get a hold of me. I can also share my email, which is 
S C A N D Y at C C C F O R P A dot O R G. So I'm always available to help. And if I'm not the right person, I'm always happy to direct you to whoever the right person would be to help with the situation. I just would like to say that we have something coming up that I think it would be awesome if you could even share it with other staff and your centers mm -hmm. to see if it's something that they would like to you know, be on board with. Sure. So on November 17th, so we have our 10th anniversary homeless awareness week. Uh, okay. It's 10 years. So it's a big one. And it's from November 13th to the 17th. And the importance of this awareness week is that it, we're increasing our awareness for students who are experiencing homelessness and why it's important to support and to support our educators who are working with them as well. And so Friday on November 17th, we are asking everyone to wear, wear red, oh, saying those two words back to back for me mm -hmm. just gets me tongue tied. <laughs> so we ask for you to wear a red shirt or something that's red and hashtag, I will be your voice. You can hashtag red shirt day 2023, or you can hashtag let's have a conversation. So Shelly, if you want to get other staff involved, like B and your other engagement workers mm -hmm. or your other case managers and take a picture of all of you wearing red, you can send it to me. We can post it on our Ekia page great. on Facebook. What a great idea. Yeah. So I think that's pretty cool that we can at least um, share that with our early childhood and because our LEAs do it from our K to 12. I also have our, I did mention it to our higher ed group that when I was back in Hershey a few weeks ago, I did share that with a few of the universities and colleges in the area to see if Great. they can get their staff and students on board. So I think it'd be cool to really get that stretched around um, and to see, you know, what, what you guys can do as far as yeah, supporting our students. I'd love to students. share that with our agency staff. Yeah, for sure. Um, so Shelly, do you have anything else that you feel it's important for our audience to know about the ELRC? Well, I would just say we are here. Reach out to us. Sometimes we are not always invited to the table or asked to be a part of things. Um, so I truly appreciate all your involvement, Liz, and just inviting us to be here today even. But we're here to partner and to help. So please reach out to me. I'd love to be in touch with anyone from the school districts, even to share at a staff meeting or any other opportunities. It allows us the chance to give other people information about what we do. So anyone can reach out and I'd love to be able to share. Please use us. We are here to help. We are here to give guidance and just explain what the work that we do. So feel free to use us. Yes, absolutely use them. Because again, and I like to reiterate this, is that a lot of families too, a lot of their barriers could be finding childcare. Mm -hmm. They can't go to work because they have a young child at home. So it makes it difficult. So if they don't know that this exists, we need to really increase the awareness that the ELRC is here. You have Child Care Works, which is the subsidy that will assist families in funding this, which well, right it depends um, based on income. Um, every family has a copay. Sometimes that copay is actually $0 or $5 a week. And then we pay a subsidy to the actual program. So the family has to pay their copay to the program and we pay the actual program. So yeah, it just depends on what their income level is and all of that. Okay. But our like $5 a week up to, you know, $50, $60 a week, depending on family size and all of that which is really not bad given what daycares cost is expensive. Really um, is. But they're setting the groundwork yes. um, for elementary school. They're setting the groundwork for child development. And so right now our 
child development world is in a tough place with lack of spaces for childcare. We don't have a waiting list for funding, but many childcare programs actually have a waiting list um, to get into them. So childcare is at a premium right now. And unfortunately, some of them are our lowest paid workers. Mm-hmm. And so it's really important also to raise the awareness that mm-hmm. our child care workers are setting the stage for elementary years. And many of them have degrees and many of them have much experience to be able to make higher wages in the educational system, but they choose to set the standard at the lower level. So childcare is in crisis in a lot of ways right now because of the need for spaces that is out there. That's great to know. Connecting with school districts through collaboration can offer numerous benefits, including access to valuable resources, like Shelly mentioned, increasing that community engagement when she emphasized the importance of and that enhanced learning outcomes for students. Early childhood development and early identification are critical components of ensuring that success. And it's important that families understand the significance of these factors And families should also know that ELRC is here for you to help school districts to know, community agencies to know. If you have families who childcare is a barrier, please let them know that there is subsidy out out there for them. There is a homeless waiver for them. So Shelly, I truly thank you for being a part of our conversation because we have yet to have someone from this level to join the podcast. Awesome. Well, thank you. you. Absolutely. Like, I am so glad that you were able to come on and share this important information. I really do hope that families are listening and professionals are listening and that they start connecting with you. You did put your number and email out there. So um, that's fine. You never know. And thank you so much for being part of this conversation with me. And again, we aim to ensure that everyone's voice is heard. And it is an achievement that we can all be proud of. So we invite you all to join us again next month for another episode of Let's Have a Conversation. 